Okay, everybody say, this is God's holy word. Inspired by the Holy Spirit. Holy men of old wrote. Moved upon by the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is here today to move upon Kubis, to teach me, upon me to hear, and to bring about new things in my life that will make me what I ought to be and bring to me what I ought to have in Jesus' name. Are you in Hebrews? Are you in chapter 12? Are you at verse 22? But you are come. Not you is to come, not you will come, not you shall come. Okay? But you are come. Okay? In other words, present, continuous present tense. You are come. So yesterday you are come, tomorrow you are come, right now you are come. Or you can just take and come you are. Okay, but, but you are come, okay? <laughs> you are come. But you are come, listen closely, unto Mount Zion and unto the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. You're not going there. You didn't go there. You didn't left to be there. It came to you. Now you are come. Verse 23. To the general assembly and the church of the firstborn which are written in heaven. To God the judge of all. To the spirits of just men made perfect. Verse 24. We'll settle the question now and forever. And to Jesus the mediator of the New Testament. Now stop here. Is Jesus your mediator right now? Does Romans 8 verse 31 through 34 says, If God be for us, who can be against us? He who did not spare his own son, but gave him up for us all. How will he not freely give us all things? Who will lay any charge against the elect of God? It is God that has declared you righteous. Who will there be that condemn you? It's Jesus Christ that died for you more than raised the seated at the right hand of God, which even now lives to intercede for you as your mediator. Sec- 1 Timothy 2 verse 6 there's one mediator between God and man the man Christ Jesus Hebrews chapter 7 25 Hebrews chapter 9 24 Jesus Christ is our mediator Uh, 1 John chapter 1 he is our advocate Jesus stands between us and the Father as our mediator now if we've come to the mediator we've come to the city we've come to the new Jerusalem did you go anywhere to get to your mediator or did you stay right on earth and he went to do it for you? Hmm? So everything is he did it, he did it, he did it, he did it. Right? To the blood of sprinkling. Are you sprinkled with the blood? Are you washed in the blood? Then you have come to it. Okay? I think that's good enough. Maybe, can we do two more? Maybe Galatians. Galatians is always a good one. This is good. This is also bad. But this is also smart. (laughs) Verse 22 says it is written that Abraham had two sons, the one by a bondmaid, the other by a free woman. But he was of the bondwoman was born after the flesh, but he of the free woman was born by promise. Which things are an allegory. In other words, a parable. In other words, a story. For these are two, two testaments. The one from Mount Sinai, where the law was come, with gender bondage, which is Agar. In other words, God calls it Agar. For this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia. Oh, Lord Jesus. God, God calls Mount Sinai, where the law was given, Arabs. Brackets, Muslims. Close brackets. Don't look at me like you want to throw me with a rugby ball. 
I mean, this is the word of God. For this Agar is Mount Sinai in Arabia, and listen to what God says. And this answers to Jerusalem, which now is and is in bondage with her children. Why? Because the law was given on Mount Sinai. Who is the law people? The people in Israel, Jerusalem. What does God call them? Agar, bondwoman, children of bondage. Verse 26, but Jerusalem, which is above, is free, which is the mother of us all. Verse 30, nevertheless, what saith the scripture? Cast out the bondwoman and her son, for the son of the bondwoman shall not be heir with the son of the free woman. So then, brethren, we are not children of the bondwoman, but of the free. Verse 11, Revelation 21. Thank you. This city having the glory of God. Maybe we should start with verse 9. And they came to me, one of the seven angels with that, the seven vials full of the seven last plagues, and talked with me, saying, Come hither, I will show you the bride, the Lamb's wife. Now remember, he just said the new Jerusalem came down, prepared as a bride for a husband. You know, and, and he talked to me, saying, Come, I will show you the bride, the Lamb's wife. And he carried me away in the spirit to a great and high mountain, I mean above, and showed me that great city, the holy Jerusalem, descending out of heaven from God, having the glory of God, and her light was like unto a stone most precious, even like a jasper stone, clear as crystal. Oh my goodness. Okay, so Jesus says something to this effect. You can be very glad that I go. If I do not go, I cannot send you the promise. And if I go, I will send you the promise of the Father. And when the Holy Spirit was poured out in Acts chapter 2, Peter is preaching. He said, this is the promise that Jesus received and poured out. So something came down from heaven. There was a sound of a mighty rushing wind from heaven. It filled all the house where they were seated and it sat upon each of them. Hmm? And they all stood up speaking in other tongues. What happened to them? Something came down from heaven, the promise of the Father according to Galatians 6, and all of a sudden he says, I saw this city come down from heaven. It had the glory, the fire of God, the light of God. Hmm? And it came down. And what happened? I saw it was like a bride prepared for a husband. And he said, he took me to a high mountain and he showed me this light city, the new Jerusalem. Jesus already prophesied, Matthew 5, 14, you are the salt of the earth. You are the light of the world. You are a city that is set on a hill that cannot be hidden. Let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven it came down it came down the old Pentecostal people used to sing it's coming down 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 it's coming down and the glory of the Lord is coming down when the saints begin to pray the Lord will have his way and the glory of the Lord is coming down remember man and we shook under the power of God the glory of God came down hey Hey, church, the New Jerusalem isn't a square city that is floating like a satellite around the earth. And we're going there and we're going to walk on streets of gold. You know, no, 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 no. Let me help you today. Let me help. Look at verse 16. And the city lieth four square. The length is as large as the breadth and he measured the city. Now we all know the story. The city was wide, high, breadth, depth. Everything was the same size. Hmm? What a funny city. I mean, how, how do you walk into a city? 
That's a cube. City. You know, where's the street going to run? Where's the houses going to be? City square, square. But he mentioned something. He said in Hebrews 12, uh, we've also come to the spirits of the just men made perfect. We've come to the family in heaven and in earth. So we are joined together with the saints that are already dead. But we can't see them because they form a cloud round and about us. Hebrews 12 verse 1. Hmm? So listen, listen to Ephesians 3 verse 16 through 21. I'll just quote the main verses. He says, verse 14 says, For this reason I bow my knees before the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ, from whom the whole family in heaven and earth derives its name. Therefore I pray for you that you will be strengthened with might in the inner man that Christ may dwell in your hearts by faith so that you can know what is the length, the breadth, the height and the depth, and that you may know the love of Christ which surpasses all knowledge, that you may be filled with all the fullness of God. The city had the glory of God. So here Paul prays, I pray that you will understand what the city is. I pray that you will know Christ dwell in your hearts by faith. Because the tabernacle of God is now with men. That is the marriage. That is the city. That is the new Jerusalem. That is the glory of God. That is the fullness of God. It all came down and it's dwelling in us, amongst us, around us. We in Christ, Christ is in us, Christ beneath me, Christ above me, Christ on my left and Christ on my right, Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ in me, Christ when I sleep, Christ when I rise, Christ the hope of glory. And that is the fullness of God, the glory of God. That is your portion, portion church. Where were we? Mm. What sermon is this? I don't know. I'm just going obediently. Yeah, word of God. Mm. Verse 4. Oh, man. Listen. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. Why? Because if you marry, you laugh. You're happy. You may be crying when she comes down the aisle. And she may be crying when she sees her parents and her dad giving her away. You know? And then when she stands in the front and she holds her hubby, oh, it changes. And when nighttime falls, it's happiness. Okay. And God shall wipe away all tears from their eyes. No, we've put this stuff in heaven. One day when we get to heaven, my sister, God will wipe away all tears. So we tell them, suffer, 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 man, suffer one day. How wicked can we be to, to tell people suffering is okay because one day your tears will be wiped away. Where did Jesus go to pay the price? Did he go to heaven and die? Did he go to heaven to set them free? Did he go to heaven to shed his blood? Did he go to heaven to get the prisoners out? Did he go to heaven to heal the sick? Did he go to heaven to break the bondages? Or did he come to earth to say, I have come to set the captives free. I have come to bring bring joy in darkness. I have come to bring light. I have come to bring healing. And man, it's on this earth that he wants you well and prosperous. How are we going to be a shining light if the world can't see something different in the church? We need a healthy church, prosperous church, successful church, a church that's a city on a hill, the light of the world that can show an example. This is how you can live a happy life. Hmm? Hmm? Joe, man, like the most Christians, the way they present Christ, if you try to tell somebody to become a Christian, they will say to you, I've got enough of my own problems. <laughs> yeah, they teach it. Why are we trying to get people saved? To go to heaven or to get a better life? 
We used to say in the old days, when we had our first stand up in 1980, we had a big banner that said, Jesus is the answer. Remember that was, Jesus is the answer for the world today. Above him there's no other. Jesus is the way. And then this one guy came to me and said, I see you said Jesus is the answer, so what's the problem? I look at him, I said, you, sir. He said, no, I got no problem, so why do I need an answer? And I started prophesying over him. He started weeping. He was a Hindu guy. Within five minutes, he gave his life to Jesus. He said, you know, I've been to so many churches, but I just hear always how bad it is. People, the trouble going through now, don't worry one day when Jesus takes us to heaven, all our troubles will be over. When we hit that streets of gold, no more sorrow there. There is no more sorrow there, no more tears. He's going to wipe away the tears. He said, brother, I was said, no. Oh my goodness, I don't, want to, I don't want to sign up for all these troubles. And this is what the church presents. Don't we? Why not present? Oh, but covers up, but covers up. Hey, you're not a good. We've got to go through a lot of persecutions to enter into the kingdom. I thought when you're born, you're in the kingdom. Yeah. On the way to the kingdom, you can suffer. But brother, when you're born again, you're supposed to be a new creature. You're supposed to be, have a new life. I mean, somebody need to present a king that has come to bring you a better life, not a worse life. I mean, somebody's got to stand up and say, he said, the thief comes to steal and kill and destroy. I have come that you might have life and have it more abundantly. Let the peace of God rule in your hearts. You have joy unspeakable and full of glory. He was wounded for your transgressions, bruised for your iniquities. Chastisement of our peace was upon him. With these stripes we are healed. Get rid of the junk. Somebody need to preach a better life. And somehow we need to get a better life. Jesus didn't come to give you a calm, you know, some, you know, some tranquilizer pull to get you through your troubles and say, just take another pull. But one day I'm going to steal you away and take you to heaven. And when you hit that golden streets, I'm going to take the tears from your eyes. So in this life, you know, why are you so unhappy? I'm a Christian. Oh, the devil is on my case. I thought God is on your case. I thought for the Christians, Jesus destroyed the devil, Hebrews chapter 2. Huh? My goodness, you know, why are you so angry today? Because I watch the other channels. And it's all troubles and trials, but we're going to go to heaven. Brothers, very, very soon, that trumpet is going to blow, and God is going to take us out of this mess. Which mess? Yeah. I thought we're going to make the world a better place. Yeah. I thought the glory of the Lord is going to fill all the earth. I thought everyone shall know him. No one shall say to his neighbor, know the Lord, for all shall know the Lord, because the glory of the Lord will cover the face of the earth as the waters cover the sea. The knowledge of the glory of the Lord shall cover the earth. Everybody shall know the glory. When the thing came down from heaven, and God says, my tabernacle is now with men. Is God with you or not? Yes. I mean, are we liars or do we have double mind? Double-minded people are unstable in all these ways. We need to get stable, church. And he says, when this happened, now remember, this is the revelation of Jesus Christ, the apocalypse. Not the destruction, the revelation. I will wipe away all tears from their eyes. There shall be no more death. Neither sorrow nor crying. There shall be no more pain. For the former things are passed away. Jesus said, if you eat my flesh and if you drink my blood, talking about the communion, you shall not taste death. In other words, if we have the communion week after week, 
maybe month after month, it is saying, I shall not die. I shall not die. But nobody preached it. So Romans 10 says, how can they believe if they don't hear? How can they hear if nobody preach? As it is written, faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word. So if somebody keep on preaching, we're all going to heaven. We all, that's why people still die and go to heaven. But if somebody starts preaching, listen, the word of God says, there shall be no more death. Jesus says, the Bible, Hebrews chapter, tw- chapter 2 says, He destroyed him that hath power over death, that is the devil. And he delivered them who all their lifetime were bound in bondage for fear, for, through fear of death. Second hmm. Timothy 1 verse 10, Jesus Christ brought to light life and immortality. Hmm. So somehow, some generation must realize there shall be no more death. 1 Corinthians 15 says, we shall not all die because death is the last enemy to conquer. And he said to Jesus, sit on my right hand till all your enemies be made your footstool. So there's not a Jesus coming before death is destroyed by the church, by our preaching, by our confession, because death and life is in the power of the tongue. Proverbs chapter 18 verse 21, and he that uses it shall be the fruit thereof. Deuteronomy 30, the commandment, commandment, not the law, the commandment I give you today is not difficult to keep. It's not in heaven that you should say who should go to heaven to bring it down. It's not down in the abyss that you should say who should bring it up. But it's in your mouth to speak it. Okay? Romans chapter 10, Paul repeats it. He says, the righteousness which is of faith speaketh on this wise, saying not in your heart who shall ascend to heaven and bring Christ down or who shall ascend down to the abyss to bring Christ up but what does it say the word of faith is in our mouths and in our hearts to speak it how shall they speak if they not send and how can people hear if there is no preacher as it is written how beautiful are the feet of him that brings these news so look at my feet So if there's no more death, it means there's no more tears. If there's no more death, there's no more pain. Because death causes pain. Death causes heartache. Man, come on. Every funeral that you stand by, do people jump up and down and say, thank you. Wow, Uncle Jack has passed away. Wee, Uncle Jack. Except if you, you know, you know you're going to get 10 million. <laughs> God help us. It's a somber moment. Uncle Jack has passed away. Hmm? Jesus says in his apocalypse, his revelation, not his destruction, there shall be no more death, no more pain. Tears are going to be wiped away because the old things have passed away. Come on. Come on, come on. Hebrews chapter 10, verse 5, right through 14. You know, he says, sacrifice an offering you did not desire, but you have prepared a body for me. As it is written in the scroll of the book, behold, here I am, you have prepared a body for me. He come to take away the first, to establish the second. And by the offering of the body of Jesus Christ, you are sanctified once and for all. And those whom he has sanctified, he has also perfected. And their sins and their iniquities, I will remember no more. Let us therefore come boldly into the Holy of Holies by a new and living way through the blood of Jesus Christ, through the veil which is his flesh with our bodies washed with clean water and our hearts sprinkled by the blood of Jesus Christ. Come on, saints. If any man is in Christ, he is a new creation. The old things have passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Did Jesus come to bring a new or did he just come to polish up the old? Hebrews chapter 8, the last verse says, that which is old is ready for destruction and ready to be abolished totally. Thank you for the loud amens in the house. 
Where did you get this message? No, I'm just reading Bible. <laughs> uh, for the former things have passed away. Verse 5. This is where it all comes from. And he that sat upon the throne said, Behold, I make all things new. And he said unto me, Write, for these words are true and faithful. We, we, we showed the passion, the movie of Mel Gibson, you in our church the other day. And, uh, you know, two things stood out. And it's, it, it's, 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 I can't use the word worry. It's troubling me, you know. Paul said, the, you know, the dream troubled me. It's troubling me. You know, when we, I sat here in the front row and the movie was going on. And Jesus was in the garden at Gethsemane. And remember that wicked, bald head, Mofkop Satan, that <laughs> came there by... You know? Didn't he look queer to you? I mean, <laughs> even his eyebrows shaven. I mean, you know, just say, man, I don't like him. I feel like taking a gun and shoot the film. You know, but you know, and Jesus was a bad. Remember, he came back to the disciples the first time, and Peter said. What's wrong with you, Master? And he said to the disciples, something's wrong. He's not the same. Remember, and Jesus was troubled. The Bible says his sweat drops became blood. He was in anguish. My God, let this cup pass from me. Yet not my will, but thy will be done. And just before that, he said to the disciples, what must I say? For this hour came I into this world. And Jesus was in anguish. And as he was praying, remember that wicked moth Satan thing, you know, <laughs> let go of that serpent, you know, and that serpent sailed there, you know. And Jesus was too weak to get up. He was lying there, his strength diminished and depleted, and he was praying, and he pushed himself up. You know, and he was so weak after the prayer. And as he got up, you know, you know, there was like that sound over the me. You know, I hopped so high on my chair, and but my eyes were glued on the screen. And the sound came first. For those who watch the movie, go watch it. The sound came, and then that foot came down. Oh, man. And he crushed the head of the serpent, that old dragon called Satan and devil that accused the brethren day and night before our God. And he was cast out and his place was found in heaven no more. And they overcame him by the word of their testimony and by the blood of the Lamb. Mm. And then the other portion. Jesus was carrying that cross and he just kept on falling. No more strength. Imagine the loss of all that blood. But he said, no man can take my life. Because I've got this commandment from my father, I must lay down my life and then I must pick it up. So he couldn't die. But he was so weak and he fell and he fell. And that one minute he fell, you know, and that one disciple helped Mary to come through that little gap and she ran and tried to wipe his face, you know. And as he fell, he looked up and said, Mother, I make all things new. Whew. Man, I sat here in the front row. I wept. I, I tell you, I wept when the movie was over. I just ran to my office. I just said, thank you for coming, everybody. Go, you know, and I just heard, I make all things new. I make all things new. And here it is. I make all things new. Where? By him dying, sending the new Jerusalem, which is making you his bride, in saying to you, I'm going to dwell with you. I'm going to be with you. I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. And if God is for you, who can be against you? Come on, man. I am with you even till the end of the age. Jesus is your portion. Jesus is your guarantee. Jesus is your husband. Jesus is your comforter. Jesus is your guide. Jesus is your teacher. Jesus is your counselor. Jesus is your mediator. Jesus is your bread of life. Jesus is your water of life. Jesus is the one that fills all in all. He is your portion. He lives in you. That makes you more than a conqueror through Christ who loves you. Hmm. I make all things new. If any man is in Christ, he's a new creature. He said, write this is, 
faith. But he said, the former things are now passed away. Maybe we should just take a trip through the book of Isaiah. Just a few books. Let's start in verse chapter 40. Verse 28. Have you not known? Have you not heard that the everlasting God, the Lord, the creator of the ends of the earth, fainteth not, neither is weary? There is no searching of his understanding. He giveth power to the faint. And to them that have no mighty increase of strength, even the youth shall faint and be weary, and the young men shall utterly fall. But they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. Remember, he makes all things new, and the former things are passed away. Now, I'm going to read, try and read scriptures that bring that into your life today. Remember, it's a prophecy. That they call Isaiah the messianic prophecy. So he prophesied about the coming of Christ, the dying of Christ, the resurrection of Christ, and what it means for the church of Jesus Christ. Renew their strength. They shall mount up on wings as eagles. They shall run and not be weary. They shall walk, and they shall not faint. Mm. Is that all right? Let's go 41, maybe verse, um, maybe verse 4. Who has wrought and done it, calling the generations from the beginning? I, the Lord, the first, and with the last, I am here. Remember the revelation? And I saw him. He had the keys of death and of hell. And he said, I am. I am the beginning and the ending. I'm the Alpha and the Omega. I'm the first and the last. I was dead, but behold, I'm alive forevermore. I am, I am, I am, I am, I am, I am. Verse 10, fear thou not. Man, you've got to take this word tonight. For I am with thee. Be not dismayed, for I am thy God. I will strengthen thee. Yea, I will help thee. Yea, I will uphold thee with the right hand of my righteousness. I'm bringing you a word from the heart of the almighty God. Behold, I make all things new. The former things are passed away. Behold, the new things have come. Jesus paid a price for you to live a better life, to live a peaceful, joyful, happy, conquering, healthy, prosperous, successful life. Behold, all that that they were incensed against these shall be ashamed and confounded. They shall be as nothing, and they that strive with thee shall perish. Thou shalt seek them and shall not find them. <laughs> Man, come on, take the word. Even them that contend, you must make a, you must make a, you know, no, underline the scriptures or make a mark with those that I read because it's a prophetic word. I'm going to choose scriptures that will come out as a prophecy for you today. Thou shalt seek them and shall not find them. Even them that contended with thee, they that war against thee, shall be as nothing and as a thing of, a, of naught. For I, the Lord thy God, will hold thy right hand, saying unto thee, Fear not, I will help thee. Verse 18. I will open rivers in high places and fountains in the midst of the valleys. I will make the wilderness a pool of water and the dry land springs of water. I'm bringing a prophecy to the church of Jesus Christ on this day. Verse 23, show the things that are to come hereafter that they may know that you are God's. Psalm 82, verse 6, does not the words of the law says, I say, you are God. John chapter 10, verse 34, Jesus said, you know, verse 33, they want to stone him. And Jesus said, for which of the works do you want to stone me? They say, we don't want to stone you for any of the good works. We stone you because you make yourself equal with God. Jesus said, does not your law say, I say that you are God's if it's written of them that were early there and the word cannot be annulled. How much more? more is it true for now that I say you are God's here it is again come on you are rulers you are reigners he has put everything under man's control let us make man in our image and let us give them dominion over the fish of the sea the fowl of the air and everything that creepeth upon the face of the earth and let them have dominion and subdue everything you are a commander in charge you are a ruler you are a king crowned with glory and honor you are a saint you are a prince with God you are one and equal with Christ he said father make us one He's one with you. He married you. You are one with him. Flesh of his flesh and bone of his bone. Mm. 
Be who has declared 26 from the beginning that we may know and before time that we may say he is righteous. There is none that showeth, there is none that declareth, yea, there is none that heareth your words. The first shall say to Zion, behold, behold them, and I will give to Jerusalem then one that bringeth good news. Hmm? 42, let's go to verse 6. I, the Lord, have called thee in righteousness. I will hold your hand. I will keep you. Listen, this is a prophetic word. I will keep you. I give you a covenant of the people for a light to the Gentiles, to open the blind eyes, to bring out the prisoners from the prison, and them that sit in darkness out of the prison house. I am the Lord. That is my name. And my glory will I not give to another, neither my praise to graven images. Now, don't think God will not give you glory because in John chapter 17, Jesus prays, Father, I have given them thy glory that they may be one. Why will he not give this glory to another? Because in Corinthians, as well as in Galatians, Paul says, if somebody comes and preach another gospel, if somebody comes and preach another Jesus, then you must know Know that he is a curse. God will not give his glory to the law. God will not give his glory to the legalistic law people. God gives his glory to the people that will follow Jesus that says old things are gone and new things have come. Where are we? Uh, verse 10. Behold, here it comes. Revelation 21. Behold, the former things are come to pass. New things do I declare. Before they spring forth, I tell you of them. Sing unto the Lord a new song. Verse 16, 42. And I will bring the blind by a way that they knew not. I will lead them in paths that they have not known. I will make darkness light before them. And crooked things I will make straight. These are the things that I do unto them and will not forsake them. Yes. 22. But this is a people, come on, listen, robbed and spoiled. They are all snared in holes. They are hidden in prison houses. They are a prey and none delivereth for a spoil and none say restore. Who among you will give ear to this? Who will hearken and hear for the time to come? God says there's a time to come where people that sit in all the stress and trouble and darkness will cry restore. God said, is there anybody in the time to come that will have an ear that will hear and say restore? I can give you another word. Renew. I can give you another word. Revive. And then there's people that say, oh, no, we don't believe in revival. There it is. If the stuff is wrong, we need to cry, revival. Revive us, O oh Lord. Mm. It's time to sing some revival songs. Hallelujah, thine the glory. Hallelujah, amen. Hallelujah, thine the glory, revive us. Amen. Who among you will give ear? Hmm? Who will cry out? Verse 2, chapter 43, there we are. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Through the rivers, they shall not overflow you. When you walk through the fire, you shall not be burned. Neither shall a flame kindle upon you. In other words, Psalm 91. Mm, he that dwelleth in the secret place of the Most High shall abide under the shadow of the Almighty. I shall say of the Lord, my God, my rock and my fortress. Man, he is my shelter. Under his wings I will find cover. And what does he say? When I dwell there, no evil shall come near me. No evil shall come near my dwelling place. For angels will get charged to camp round and about me. Oh man, oh man, oh man. Man, oh man, oh man. Verse 5, fear not, for I am with you. 
I will bring your seed from the east and gather thee from the west. I will say to the north, give up and to the south, keep not back. Bring my sons from far, my daughters from the end of the earth, every one that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory. Come on, there he gives you the glory. I have formed him, yea, I have made him. Verse 11, I, even I, am the Lord, and beside me there is no Savior. Verse 13, yes, before the day was, I am He, and there is none that can deliver out of my hand. I will work, and who shall let it? And the men, other translations says, God is at work, and He can stop Him. Everybody say, God is at work for me, and nothing can stop Him. God is my Savior, my blesser, my Redeemer, my Prosperer my guide, my healer, my deliverer, my peace bringer, and nothing can stop him. Man. Yo, we, this is all just Revelation 21. Behold, the former things are passed away and everything is new. I make all things new. Verse 16. We are still in 43. Thus saith the Lord which maketh a way in the sea and the path in the mighty waters. Are you looking for a way out of stuff? which bringeth forth the chariot and the horse, reminding you of Exodus 14 and 15. The army and the power, they shall lie down together, they shall not rise. They are extinct. Mm, you didn't hear. You didn't hear. Stuff that's coming against you, people that's worrying against you, people that is troubling you, things that are trying to undermine you, oppose you, and stand against you. God says they're going to become extinct because God is fighting for you like He did in Exodus 14 and 15, like the horses in the chariot of Egypt. God is fighting for you. Stand and see the salvation of the Lord. The battle is not yours. The battle is the Lord's. Verse 18. Remember ye not the former things, neither consider the old things. Can you see it's all that revelation 21? Behold, I will do a new thing. Now it shall spring forth. Shall you not know it? I will even make a way in the wilderness and rivers in the desert. Are you sitting in the wilderness place today? Are you feeling you're sitting in the desert place and things seem so dry? God says he's breaking forth rivers for you. God is making streams for you. God is making a way out for you. God is going to bless you, prosper you, quench your thirst. Come on, church. God is bringing us a prophetic word in this day. Verse 24, you have brought me no sweet cane with money, neither have you filled me with the fat of your sacrifices, but you have made me to serve with thy sins. Thou hast wearied me with thy iniquities. But listen, I, even I, am he that blotteth out your transgressions for my own sake. I will not remember your sins. So put me in remembrance. There's the communion table. Whenever you take this bread and take this cup, put me in remembrance. Man, we should have had communion table today. Where can we go? 44, let's go to verse 3. For I, oh man, will pour water on him that is thirsty and floods upon the dry ground. I will pour my spirit upon your seed and my blessing upon your offspring and they shall spring up as among the grass and as willows by the water courses. My goodness. Verse 8. Fear ye not. Neither be afraid. Have not I told you from that time and have declared it? You are my witnesses. Uh, is there a God besides me? Is there no God? I know not any. Verse 22, chapter 44. I have blotted out as a thick cloud thy transgressions and as a cloud thy sins. Return unto me for I have redeemed thee. Sing, O heavens, for the Lord hath done it. Shout, you lower parts of the earth. Break forth into singing, you mountains. O forest, and forth into singing. Oh, every tree therein. For the Lord hath redeemed Jacob and glorified himself in Israel. Thus saith the Lord your redeemer. 
redeemer and he that formed thee from the womb i am the lord that maketh all things that stretches forth the heavens alone that spreadeth abroad the earth by myself that frustrate the tokens of the liars and make diviners mad that turneth wise men backward and maketh their knowledge foolish i don't care who's standing up against you i don't care who's opposing you they may be witches they may be some gomas they may be fortune tellers god says i'm gonna make them mad i'm gonna destroy them i gotta fight for you there's no god like me 45 verse 2 I will go before you I will make crooked places straight I will break in pieces the gates of brass and cut and sunder the bars of iron I will give you the treasures of darkness and hidden riches of secret places that you may know that I the Lord which call you by thy name am your God oh come on somebody verse 5 I am the Lord and there is none else I hope you're making marks at these scriptures this is chosen scriptures that's coming as a prophetic word where God says behold not the former things behold I make all things new because I am with you this is the revelation of the Lord Jesus Christ the apocalypse which people call destruction is not so it's a revelation of the goodness and the grace and the mercy and the presence of the eternal God that has made a tabernacle among you I am with you you verse 5 chapter 45 I think we were there I am the Lord there's none else there's no God beside me I girded thee though thou hast not known me that thou may know from the rising of the sun and from the west that there is none besides me I am the Lord and there is none else God is reminding us today of something I form the light, I create darkness, I make peace, I create evil. I, the Lord, do all these things. Drop down your heavens from above and let the skies pour down righteousness. Let the earth open and let them spring for salvation and let righteousness spring up together. I, the Lord, have created it. Verse 11, thus saith the Lord, the Holy One of Israel and his maker, ask of me things to come concerning my sons. And concerning the work of my hands command ye me in other words you can stand up and say oh God in the name of Jesus I ask and command that this thing will now come to pass if God said he made it you can command it if God has brought healing you can command it if God has brought blessings you can command it don't be shy church start commanding God concerning the things of his hand God wants you blessed and prosperous and healthy and successful Successful and healed in Jesus name mm. I have made the earth and created man upon it I even my hands have stretched out the heavens and all their host have I commanded I've raised him up in righteousness will direct his ways oh man oh man oh man where shall we go where shall we go where shall we go again he says there is surely no God like me end of verse 14 verse 17 but Israel shall be saved in the Lord with an everlasting salvation. You shall not be ashamed nor confounded world without end. For thus saith the Lord that created the heavens. God himself that formed the earth and made it. He hath established it. He hath created it not in vain. He formed it to be inhabited. I am the Lord in this none else. I have not spoken in secret. In a dark place of the earth I said unto the seed of Jacob. Seek ye me in vain. I the Lord speak righteousness. I declare things that are right. 46, verse 10, God, I declare the end from the beginning. From ancient times, the things that are not yet done, saying my counsel shall stand and I will do all my pleasure. Paul says, Romans 4, 17, God calls those things that are not as though they already were. God says, Romans 8, verse 29, man before the foundation of the earth, before everything, he has preordained you foreordained you, selected you, 
chosen you, made you righteous, sanctified you, glorified you, that you may be conformed to the image of the Son. Before there was a foundation of this earth, Ephesians 1, he has chosen you to be conformed and righteous and holy and sanctified and blameless without spot or without wrinkle. Colossians 1 verse 20 and 21. He has chosen you long before you were born, before you were in your mother's womb. He has formed you and known your part and he has made you glorious and excellent. Oh man. 48 verse 16. Come ye near unto me. Hear ye this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning. I just want to pick up with that other words. From the time that it was, there am I. And now the Lord God and His Spirit has sent me. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord your God, which teaches thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that you should go. Hmm? 49, 10, 9, 49, 9. That thou mayest say to the prisoners, go forth. To them that are in darkness, show yourselves that they shall feed in the ways and their pastors shall be in high places. They shall not hunger nor thirst, neither shall the heat nor sun smite them. Verse in Psalm 91, the sun shall not spike you by day, neither the moon by night, neither the pestilence that walk around at noonday. For the Lord your God is with you to protect you and to cover you. Oh, for, for he that hath mercy on them shall lead them, even by the springs of water shall he guide them. Oh man, let's jump, oh, let's jump to chapter. 52. Awake, awake. Put on strength, O Zion. Put on your beautiful garments, O Jerusalem, the holy city. I saw the new Jerusalem, the holy city. Come down from God, prepareth as a bride for a husband. And he said, Behold, the tabernacle of God is now with men. There shall be no more tears, neither pain, neither sorrow, for neither death, because it has passed away. And behold, I make all things new. Mm. Shake yourself loose from the dust. Arise and sit in a dignified place. Come on, seconds. First Samuel 2, verse 8. I will take the people out of the dust. I will raise them and sit them up in a dignified place. You were saved by grace. You were dead in your trespasses and sin. He has quickened you and raised you and seated you together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might prove what is this excellent wisdom of God that the church might prove to the principalities and powers what is this wisdom and power of the almighty God oh man verse 12 for you shall go not go out with haste nor go by flight in other words don't let stuff worry you don't get anxious don't hurry into stuff for the Lord will go before you the God of Israel will be your real reward how would you like God to be before you God to be behind you. You know, we got to do, we got to do, we got to do. No, wait, wait, wait. Let God lead you. Let God guide you. And everything will go forth in peace. 53, who hath believed our report. We know the story of Jesus dying for us. Verse, chapter 54. And this is quoted in Isaiah, uh, in uh, Galatians 4 that I read about the Jerusalem above. Sing, O barren, thou didst not bear. Bring forth, this is talking about the church and not Jerusalem, Israel. Bring forth into, break forth into singing and cry aloud. We finished, eh? That thou didst not travail with child, for thou art the children, for the children of the desolate are more than the children of the married wife, say the Lord. Enlarge the place of your tent. I'm prophesying. Let them stretch forth the curtains of your habitation. Spare not. Lengthen your cords, strengthen your stakes, for you shall break forth on the right hand, you shall break forth on the left, your seed shall inherit the Gentiles, and they make the desolate cities to be inhabited. Verse 11, O oh, you afflicted, 
tossed with tempest and not comforted. Behold, I will lay your stones with fair colors and lay your foundations with sapphires. I will make your windows of agates and thy gates of carbuncles and all thy borders of pleasant stones and thy children shall be taught of the Lord and great shall be the peace of thy children. Listen, stop. Everything that I read now is in Revelation 21. The walls of the city, the foundations of the city, you know, which is the new Jerusalem, which is the church, which is you. Verse 14, let's finish it. In righteousness shall you be established. You shall be far from oppression. For you shall not fear, and you shall be far from terror, for it shall not come near thee. Behold, they shall surely gather together, but not by me. Whosoever shall gather together against you shall fall for your sake. Behold, I've created the smith that bloweth the coals of fire that bringeth forth an instrument for his work, and I've created the waster to destroy. No weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. And every tongue that rises against thee in judgment you shall condemn. This is the heritage of the servants of the Lord, and their righteousness is of me, saith the Lord.